Ipsy leads the way. Ipsy. One system personnel and pay. Ipsy. Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us for the Ipsy podcast, where we give you updates on what's going on with the program. I'm CW2 Jessica Racinos, Ipsy instructor and course developer assigned to the Senior Leader Training Division here at the Adjutant General Schoolhouse, and I'll be serving as your host for the episode. Today, I'm joined by CW5 Chad Bowen, Chief Warrant Officer of the AG Branch. Welcome, sir. It is an honor to have you. Nah, just hey, thank you. Thank you to the team. Today's a great day. I'm glad to share in this conversation and all the warrants on here. So thank you again. Thank you, Chief. We're also joined by CW2 James Wolden, G1HR Systems Branch Chief, and CW2 Reynold Raj, Human Resources Technician. Welcome, team. Hey, good afternoon. Thank you so much. This is Mr. Walden, and thank you for the intro, and we're really excited to be here. Hey, Chief Raj here. Super grateful to be here. Thanks for having me. In case you couldn't already tell by our guest list, we're changing things up a bit today. We're going to speak with some chiefs to get their perspective on IPSE and talk about embracing change. As one of the few IPSE instructors at the schoolhouse, I know embracing change and self-development has been the key to my success. I train all three components and receive students from around the world. I enjoy the rank diversity and the different roles that each student brings because it helps me develop and update content and understand the system through a National Guard, Reserve, and Active Duty perspective. This system has brought all HR professionals together to help adapt and conquer. As we all know, IPSA Release 3 have been live for over a year. When it launched, it brought about big changes for how soldiers at all levels get things done. So we wanted to bring in Chief Bowen today to give us his thoughts. Chief Bowen, as Chief Warrant Officer of the AG Branch, what can you tell us about the importance of embracing the change that IPSA has brought to the AG Corps and especially to us Warrant Officers? Well, you start off with a good question right off the bat, don't you? All right. So IPSA has brought the level of change that we haven't seen in more than two decades you know, since Emilpo came online as the first HR web database system for us, right? Eight years prior to that, we implemented SIPRS 3, which introduced to the HR field a new operating system, Unix, right? Based off and using SQL. Uh, we have to remember we had more than 200 different systems feeding everywhere to manage our records and data. Everything was stovepipe. IPSA provided us an opportunity to modernize our processes that will integrate personnel pay and talent management capabilities into a single system to all the Army components. Now, to answer your question, the importance of us to embrace the change is paramount. The future is here. It is now. To be able to provide world-class customer service to the greatest Army on the planet, we got to dig in and accept that this is our system. We will get it right, not just for us, but for our soldiers and family, because that's what we do. I couldn't be prouder of our HR warrants because I know They are the key reason a year after implementation, we are in a better place. Being that technical expert requires our warrants in the field to go beyond and demonstrate those attributes that's key to success. It's hard. I know it is, as the system has changed the norm. Chief, what do you think the most important thing for AG professionals to understand about change, whether it's priorities, operations, or objectives? You're not holding back on these questions, I tell you. Another great question. Hey, nothing revolutionary in my answer but more of a reiteration or reminder that change is hard. It affects us in ways that sometimes we don't understand because our body and mind all reverts back to a comfortable and the known, right? You know, our homostasis, our stable and balanced state. Now we have a new system and everything we knew on how the process was has changed. We fight it by questioning instead of looking at it as an opportunity. So instead of saying why, I want you to think about the first question to be why not? So I think about the most important thing for us is to accept that change is the new norm until we get the system updated to a point where it becomes norm. So we can manage what the priorities are and understand how it will affect the organization's operations or our HR objectives. It's a balance and I know our warrants will be required to be creative and apply critical thinking on a data basis. And what role do you think IPSA would play in that? Uh, Right now, everything. It's a big challenge we have right now for HR professionals. HR has evolved into a fundamental asset for any successful organization utilizing technology to operate more efficiently and strategically. And what are the top three ways we can implement change in the AG Corps? 
Uh, a lot of people have a lot of different answers for this. For me, I think it's understanding that this is our opportunity to change without limiting ourselves to only what we know or what we're comfortable with. Got to continue the self-development, go to our professional courses and take other courses to further our development of our knowledge and skills. One of the things I say to every one officer class or wh whoever I speak to, it's always the second thing is deliberate practice. You got to get into the system, right? On a daily basis, that's the norm, right? That's that deliberate practice and that repetition. Next would be embrace HR analytics because it's going to drive our success. The core must have a baseline data education because we understand data. We've been dealing with data since before I came in the Army but it's a baseline understanding of data literacy and the analytics and the visualization as commanders now rely on it more and more. Decisions are made based upon those visualizations that we provide. And it requires us to understand that this in a way that we haven't been used to, right? You mentioned the shaping of the future of the HE core. What do you envision for the future of the core? Let's say 10 years out. Well, I think it goes back to, I, I kind of look back 10 years ago when we had what we called HR assassins, right? The Chief Tyuses, the Ray Reiskas, where through their self-development and they were getting out there utilizing those tools and bringing it over and implementing it, integrating it to improve our HR process and how we can do it. So, so to me, 10 years ago, what they were doing is what we expect now. Now, looking forward, you know, we're, the core's transformation is the evolution of HR functions as we integrate the processes on how we deliver that HR that will affect our HR strategies that can have a strategic impact. Visionary HR leaders will continue to look at the next transformation of how we can harness our AI-powered talent management systems. I envision the future of the core in 10 years to be more credentialed, skilled about the, with the emerging technologies, and analytical as we will have a foundation of data education as it relates to HR and MILPAY. The first step toward leveraging legacy modernization is to shift the focus from backward looking to forward looking. Chief, thank you for sharing your perspective. Even one year out, we're still adjusting and embracing change. Chief Warrant Officers have been a huge part of the HR transformation effort. I want to turn it now to CW2 Walden to add to this conversation. James, how is your team leveraging IPSA? to implement change. Hey, thank you again, Jessica. And like I said, it's an honor to be here. It's really exciting to hear about some of these future capabilities and potential changes from the from the AG core side of the house and the schoolhouse as well. I don't want to just sit here and talk about my team from Oklahoma and the, and the things that they've done, but we try to push and drive change uh, across the force in our state to have this combined effort. But I really want to talk about the efforts of the National Guard as a whole. I really think that as a force, we've been kind of instrumental in the early IPSA implementation, and we've been live in the system since around 2020. Large population of our personnel within the formation on orders prior to that to help in preparation. Um, going through the schoolhouse, I, I see that the core of the AG strategy in the future includes this modernization effort, and we're really seeing more development of that and what that looks like in, in the future. And I really think that the National Guard has been pivotal in, in that role and in that regard up until now. So. We've worked to you know, test the initial releases of IPSA with triage issues, bringing things from all over the place up to the table to be worked on uh, prior to bringing the other compos online. We've had a long list of the HR professionals within the formation that have been a huge influence for embracing these changes, some of which are retired, some of which are still showing up day to day and making an impact. Um, we've had you know, years of experience within the warrant officer cohort that have really helped achieve some of the modernization goals while uh, collaborating at each echelon to kind of get us as far as we've gotten. The National Guard as a whole has a multi-system transformational advisory group or MSTAG for short. So we uh, work closely with the 54 states and territories basically as a way to funnel RFIs and issues up to our HRI division at National Guard Bureau. And additionally, we've also had a direct line of communication opened up between the IPSA F&D team to ensure that, you know, some of the National Guard concerns are heard at at that level. So this relationship, it's absolutely provided some key opportunities for cross compo discussion. And I really think it's been critical since, you know, we're implementing so many different actions between the components that we all have to, you know, have that common voice to, to make these changes that really impact us all. But, you know, I'd like to end with that change piece, you know, IPSA is really pushed and 
been the vehicle for these modernization efforts and changes, but it's our HR professionals that are, you know, currently at the wheel driving that train. James, how has IPSA helped bring about change? And what do those changes mean for warrant officers? So, great question. And uh, we talk about the warrant officer piece a lot in our own uh, warrant officer professional development and things like that. But, you know, the shift to IPSA has forced all of us and all HR pros together to, to dive in and really look into our data management and system capabilities. So collectively, we've, you know, identified some processes that are outdated and on occasion somewhat redundant. And uh, I'm sure most of us would, of course, prefer to use the legacy way of doing things in certain scenarios. But this push for change has made a great way of analyzing our processes and procedures. And IPSA has got some automation, transparency, and CRM capabilities that have really opened up more of an agile response to some of our HR needs throughout the force. Uh, it's been a difficult journey at times, of course, for some of our warrant officers and HR professionals, but we're absolutely benefiting from this experience, whether we want to believe it or not. Um, IPSA has opened up some fantastic capabilities that have really streamlined some of our manual processes. And uh, the shift in capabilities has not only been a benefit to each individual in their professional role, but will also help improve the overall readiness capabilities of our formation. And like Mr. Bowen said, really really digging into some of these things that in the past were maybe considered a 255 or more of an IT specific background with SQL, but it's just opening up our capabilities and really having us hone in on what our skill set is and and uh, it, we're excited for it. From your foxhole, what is the one thing every warrant officer should know about how IPSA can help them and their subordinates with their promotions? Great question. I think that, you know, it's key that warrant officers and other people should know what benefits IPSA has, especially in regards to promotion. One of the key things there, in my opinion, is, you know, visibility of the soldier's individual record. You know, I ask everybody kind of dig into the self-service module in IPSA daily and kind of check for things in the record. But with all the changes regarding talent management and future capabilities that we get, it's more important now than ever that we keep our records up to date. So this really empowers our, our leaders by providing some informed guidance on accurate and real-time data, but we also drive home to keep sending CRM cases for problems that you find and using those processes to send up key supporting documents for your S1s to action and things to get your record taken care of. You know, also being that IPSA is a total army system, we're no, now really trying to push to have everyone sitting at the table for some of these discussions and enhancements. You know, looking at the different staff elements and having them bring in their experience and guidance as well to make enhancements or changes to the system that feed, fit everybody's needs. But the ability to submit an enhancement request at any level in IPSA is a huge win. The uh, IPSA team has pushed some updates to the system based solely on a simple request from an HR professional in the field. And everyone should keep pushing their feedback up through the system like that because we see the changes happening, it's happening fast, but the more feedback they get, the better they can make the system suited to meet our needs. Thank you, James. That is great information. And it sounds like your team is doing great stuff to help soldiers out. I would like to bring CW2 Reynold Raj to add to this conversation. Ray, I wanted to get you on here today because you have been out in the field using the system and even providing system training. What is your perspective on the overall transition to IPSI and your personal experience with the system? Uh, great question. So I believe we've all had our fair share of challenges, but we're collectively moving forward every day. Each problem set we face is a new challenge that provides a rewarding experience to then teach and train soldiers within the HR enterprise. I also believe that one of the greatest benefits IPSA has provided is that it takes us out of our comfort zone. I say that because we now we can now build and visualize data through OBIE, Sabre, or other components within the human capital management. I mean, we now have soldiers excited to learn how to write SQL or create better visualizations for their commanders to better understand the health of their formation. It's really a game-changing campaign that we're currently in. As for my personal experience, we can also now dialogue directly with personnel from the program, HRC, or amongst the community. So if anything, IPSA has created greater connection amongst the AG Corps, and this only creates ownership, streamlined processes, and transparency across the force. Before we waited to get an EDAS message, and I personally was never a fan of EDAS, and I know that that's hard to hear for some people, but we can now track processes cradle to grave and ensure soldiers are getting the support they need. 
if say took the transparency idea and just ran with it and I personally couldn't be happier about it. It sounds like you have been doing amazing adjusting to IPSE. What steps have you taken to help others embrace the change, whether they are your fellow warrants or at the enlisted level? Um, so collectively, I think it really starts with communicating and sharing, which only benefits all end users. Once you've identified a problem, create a solution and share on S1Net, Facebook, Teams, email, what have you, but get the info out there. All it's going to do is make our core better. It's never about retaining knowledge for yourself, right? But growing, supporting, and developing those around you. As a tech, it's based on learning faster than those around you with a greater depth, then taking that knowledge and turning it into teaching curriculum. It can be AGU sessions, pop-up training events, or getting training built into the training calendar to block off time to develop those HR pros. Uh, but change is inevitable. But how we choose to embrace it and adapt is on us by looking internally and asking ourselves where we want our unit to be six to nine months from now or the core three to five years from now, and then backwards planning and leading that charge. Proficiency in IPSA is a learned trait and really starts with absorbing knowledge from those around you, taking the time to self-educate through certification paths, advanced schooling, or through SSI developed courses. You have already taken this to the next level by teaching some IPSA courses. What topics do you cover and what areas are people most receptive to? I think we're in an era where people are trying to be a sponge as much as possible. Since release three, there has been an information overload because it's new, right? Compounded with day-to-day work-life balance. But I believe our HR professionals are out there doing their best to serve their client base. What I personally recommend is that you, the HR pro, develop and become a SME in a subject area, share that product, ask to lead a session on the G1S1 touchpoint, whether it's you alone or as a supporting member. Uh, But there's no better way to get after creating a shared understanding than teaching on an established platform. I was quite impressed when I had over 100 personnel contact me wanting to learn SQL that was integrated into the OBAE dashboard training that I delivered on touchpoint. I mean, that's amazing stuff, right? 100% progressive for our field, and it truly shows that there are people out there wanting to adapt with what IPSA can provide. It also shows that we can move forward quicker than we really believe. And sharing an S1 that is terrific, but utilizing a platform such as Touchpoint and having live dialogue, walking through procedures helps a field immensely in a different, more personable aspect than a simple PowerPoint at times. And what advice would you give someone who wants to be an IPSE subject matter expert? So becoming an IPSE SME requires more than just reading the manual, I believe. Delve deep into regulations, apply knowledge practically, and collaborate actively. But keep in mind that unit processes and procedures still apply. Identify complex problem sets within your formations, then prioritize independent problem solving. But don't hesitate to seek help. Stay updated and continuously strive for improvement. Folks historically within this podcast are always happy to help, but there are so many knowledgeable HR pros out there eager to support you to grow and develop, not just you, but those around you. Ask those that are above you and around you what they use, such as IPSA release notes, known issues, and mass messaging. What do they all truly mean? And what are the impacts to end users? And at times, information may not come to you via public messaging, so you will have to go and find it, understand it, and apply it. And I think that's what will help you become a SME. This was all great advice. Thank you to all my guests. It has been my pleasure. Being an advocate for the system is our priority as HR professionals. The schoolhouse is making sure we tackle it at our end. I'll open the floor to my guests for any additional comments. Chief Bowen. Hey, no, I appreciate. Thank you to everybody that joined. Such an honor. And I look forward to hearing and having further conversations as we continue to progress. Thank you. It's it's an absolute honor as well. And Mr. Bowen, thank you for taking the time to share some of that information again from the AG core side of the house. Uh, I will throw out that being on that MSTAG piece that we talked about earlier, I'm one of the people on the EC and love to help out and drive the train on the National Guard side. So if there's RFIs or things that we can help facilitate through the, the National Guard piece up to say, then please just jot my name down. Thank you. Yeah, and just like James said, for the COMPO1 side, at least for the active side, uh, if anybody needs help with anything, please reach out. 
Uh, but IPSA is all about just embracing the challenge, right? Um, getting out there, you know, finding issues and then creating sound solutions and sharing those solutions to everybody in the community. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. All right, that is it for this episode. Thank you all for listening. Until next time, keep driving the change we need in our army. Soldier, right job, right on time. 24-7, 365.